Hello everyone and welcome back to another a massive chess game from the chess history from 1973 and in this chess game we have Paul Keres and Heike Westerninen who was the chess champion of Finland. So this chess game happened in Tallinn in 1973. So let's see what happened. This is a massive chess game. Paul Keres is considered as one of the greatest chess players ever who never won the world chess championship title according to many chess experts. So Paul Keres starts the game with pushing to the pawn g6, e4, bishop to g7 and simply developing the pieces, capturing the pawn and now queen to a5. Please note that if capturing the pawn then queen takes bishop. So queen to d2, unpinning the knight and then capturing the pawn, knight to d5, developing the bishop, pushing the pawn, extra defense and then knight to d7, Rook over, developing the knight, pushing the pawn, and then bishop goes back, attacking the queen, queen goes back, knight out, queen over, knight in, and then knight to c5, knight to b5, Paul Keres is targeting on c7, so knight takes on d5, capturing, and now bishop goes back, defending the bishop, and attacking the knight. And in this position, after the next move of Paul Keres, uh, black is planning to castle, very soon, so that is the plan, a castling in the king's side, but in this position, out of nowhere, Paul Keres, he simply sacrificed the rook, rook takes on c5, he is sacrificing the exchange, rook takes on c5, what a move by Paul Keres, this was unexpected, and he is still targeting on c7, so what else, black has to accept the sacrifice, and then d6 by Paul Keres, when your opponent's king haven't castled, pushing the e or the d pawn is usually a very good idea. So e takes on d6 and then knight takes on d6. But in this position, e, if capturing the knight, that is not a very good idea because of capturing the bishop with check. And where is the king going? If king goes here, then capturing the pawn. If moving again, then pushing the pawn and white is going to promote a queen. So in this position black has to take, but now watch this position, the queen is coming, the bishop is coming and this is a very dangerous position for black, a defending is not so easy. So you can see that black is in big trouble, the king is exposed and white is winning. So this is why e takes on d6, knight takes on d6, king over and now what would you do in this position if you had the white pieces? White plays a very important move, which is discombobulating black's position. So can you see the next move of Paul Keres? Maybe, maybe bishop takes on c5 is expected, which looks like a very good move. But in this position, Paul Keres captured on f7. What a shot. This is also attacking the rook, but we have bishop to e6, not even defending the rook not even capturing the knight. If king takes on f7, then queen takes on d7, and black is in big trouble. So this is why knight takes on f7, and now bishop to e6, Paul Keres played knight to g5, attacking the bishop, bishop takes on a2, and then Paul Keres pushed the pawn, sorry, he captured the pawn check first, and after moving the king, here comes another very dangerous looking move, by Paul Keres. He pushed the pawn and this is a nasty discover attack to the bishop. Defending the bishop and now queen to d3, placing the queen in the light square and bishop goes back and why not repeating the move? Why not bishop goes back again? What happens if bishop goes back? Can you see the best move in this position for white? Actually, white has a force checkmate, and after that move, black is losing, black is getting checkmated. The move is queen to c4, this is check. Where is the king going? The bishop is covering the escape square, also the knight, queen is checking the king. Only defense, and then capturing the bishop, checkmate. There is no defense, and black is getting checkmated. So this is why bishop goes all the way back, and Paul Keres snaps the bishop off, Knight takes on f7, chopping the bishop, 
but Pester Ninen desperately played Queen to F4, not even capturing the knight. If capturing the knight, black is getting checkmated, just like this. Or if king to f6, this is also getting checkmated, there is no defense. A ferocious, ferocious attack by Paul Keres, so queen goes down and then knight to g5. What a kind man this Paul Keres is. He says, okay, okay, if you want my knight, you can take it. What a, what a kind man. But we have queen to c1, not capturing the knight. <laughs> what happens if capturing the knight? Can you see the next move of white? This is the next move of white. Only defense, checkmate. There is no defense. This is why we have queen to c1. Ah, this is so beautiful, isn't it? I mean, F. I'm enjoying this, seriously. This is art, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Keres is known as Paul the Second. No, wen no wonder why. Queen check, defending with the bishop. Queen is coming for the checkmate threat, how to defend. So bishop down, checking the king, making room for the king. Queen takes on b7, and black is in big trouble. King to h6, knight check, and now black resigned. If king goes down, then Black is in the mating net because of this move, the pawn is coming and actually defending is not so easy. You can check the king but that's not going to do much. The king is escaping, you can push the pawn, uh, push the f pawn, that is also going to be checkmate. Uh, you have to capture the bishop, uh, king takes queen and that is going to be checkmate. So let's say king up but then capturing the rook with check I believe is all over for black. So. Uh, thank you very much for watching. What do you think about this chess game of Paul Keres? <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? Paul Keres was magnificent. And thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye-bye.